build anew. This message is a chance for the church of Christ in Rwanda to build a new house. This message is a chance for the church of Christ in Tanzania to build a new house. This message is a chance for the church of Christ in Uganda to build a new. It's a chance for the church of Christ in DRC to build a new. It is a chance for the church of Christ in Kenya to build it anew. Don't look at how expensive what your throne is. Just look at the good side of it. That is a chance for me to start anew. It is a chance for the four corners of the earth to start anew. A new walk, a spiritual journey. Not anymore a physical journey. Do you hear me somebody? So there is a lot you can learn about the midnight hour from the Bible. God did not give you this Bible for fun. Everything from the first book of Genesis to the last book of Revelation is about the rapture. Like it was during the time of Noah, so will it be at the coming of the Son of Man. The time of Noah, the door was opened, the door was announced, but on that day, it was shut. So will it be shut. The book of Matthew 25, the wise virgins, I'm talking about the door to rapture, okay? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I did not know this what the Lord wanted to do. Hmm? At your, we are preaching rapture. And we are preparing the church. How can you prepare if you yourself are not prepared? How can you deliver when you are not yet delivered? The book of Matthew chapter 25, precious people. As I finish this now, I bring the ship to the shore. Then I will anchor it. Anchor it on the four glorious gospels, right? Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you see the importance of what John the Baptist talked about? Anchor your gospel, anchor your messages, anchor your preaching, anchor your sermons unto the four glorious gospels. Those are the four white horses that the Father showed me when John the Baptist was talking to me. And then from that point on, you can now navigate the entire Bible to the four ends of the earth. Okay? Yes. So Matthew 25, this is what he says. He's talking about the parable of the ten virgins, okay? And you see very carefully what the Lord said when the midnight hour is near, verse 5. He says, The bridegroom was long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. Matthew 25, verse 5. You saw that? That is where the church is. She's in a spiritual sleep. Because the spiritual clock <coughs> says it's spiritually 11.59 p.m., right? But then uh, the bridegroom comes, but look at what verse 10 says. Hallelujah. But verse 10 says, Excuse me, verse 10 says, But while they were on their way to buy the oil, he's talking about the five foolish virgins, okay? The bridegroom arrived, and the virgins who were ready went in with him to the banquet, the wedding banquet. Listen to what he says there. And the door was shut. The door was shut. Not one of the virgins went back and shut the door. Mm -mm was shut by God. Did you see the same thing happening at the time of Noah? But what amazes me here, you have the remnant church that comes out. Ten wise virgins step out of the church. Out of the walls of church, they go to evangelize Christ, right? In the streets, in the markets, everywhere. That's the remnant church that steps out. Let's say church, you can also be, you can be in the wall, but you have stepped out from the world, right? You can be in the four corners, but you have four walls, but you have stepped out of the world. That's the separation that the virgins did, right? It's a spiritual separation, right? But five of the virgins were burning some strange lamps, right? All the lamps go on, the ten lamps, wise and foolish, five wise, five foolish, go on up to right close to the midnight. But when the midnight cry is announced by that one that went to talk to that family that that family is now ready to come and wed your daughter. You see that? That was the time to trim the wicks, right? He says, and they woke up, you see? The cry rang out, 
Then all the virgins woke up, verse 7, and trimmed their lamps. That's the time to trim the kitambi, the wicks. Why is it important to trim the wicks? Because the midnight hour is nigh, it is near. The light that your candle has been emitting throughout this night has been sufficient, right? You say, your, your word is like a lamp unto my feet, right? Has been sufficient, right? But when it comes the midnight hour, the darkness became thicker. And you enter that house and say, hey, is there no lamp here today? Is there no light in this house? They say, oh, there's a lamp. It's at the corner there. So how come today I feel as if it's just dark here? The darkness at the midnight hour becomes thicker. And that's why there is need to trim the lamp, add the oil, and glow the flame. Because you need now a stronger flame from the lamp. You see that? Otherwise, the thick darkness is aimed by the devil. It is intended by the devil to undermine the lamp that you've been lighting. To undermine it so it appears as if there is no lamp. Does somebody see the church there? Her lamp cannot be seen. Nobody has stood out. The lamp is dim. The lamp you are used to cannot work anymore. That's why there is need to start anew. The Jewish people throw the sofa sets out. Start anew. It's a spiritual start anew. You see that? You need to trim the lamps, pour the oil that the, lamp, the light may be stronger, commensurate, proportionate, correspondingly to the level of darkness in this dispensation. You see that? This is what the Lord is saying here. But what amazes me is that the same deception the Lord talked about in Matthew 24 shows up here. When he says, the five foolish ones were told to go buy oil. You see that? While the wise ones poured the Holy Spirit into their salvation and they lit their lamps into the wedding into eternity. Their gown was glorified by the latter anointing, right? The dew that Isaiah saw, that's the jar, okay? The jar of oil they carried, that's the dew. They poured, transformed them into immortal spiritual bodies and they entered into the wedding of the Lamb, right? That's the dew that I want to talk about. But what's amazing to me that the foolish virgins were told to go buy some oil. And they surely went. That tells us that they were burning a different oil. Right? They could even go to the same shops and look for it. Who can buy the anointing of the Holy Spirit? But today you see the church is selling it on TV. Right? They are selling small bottles of anointing. Eh? Or a small handkerchief. I'm told if you buy it, cover yourself, anointing will cover you. They are selling the Holy Spirit. If you send me a gift, a love gift of what, what, I prepared so many bottles, small bottles of anointing oil to give you. People can go there buy. Uh, depending on your money, you can buy the size of the bottle. They went to buy. And that raises the question of the fact that when the ten lamps were lighting, surely there must have been confusion to the sheep, right? To know which is really the genuine lamp and which is coming from the Holy Spirit, which is the Holy Spirit and which is coming from the enemy. You see that? The false tongues were here as the Holy Spirit was giving true tongues. The false prophecies were here as the Holy Spirit was speaking true prophecy on the rapture, the repentance, the holiness of God. There was Mchanganjiko Malum, there was a mix in the church. Deception that the Lord talked about in Matthew 24, right? Be careful. The, at that time, many will come to deceive you. Make sure you are not deceived. Falsehood. The biggest sin of the Antichrist is what? Deception. He will come to lie to them that he is he that comes from the Lord, that they may worship him like they have worshipped Christ. You see that? That is preparing the way during the beginning of birth pains,